The Polyend Tracker Performance Mode surprised me. Freebeat. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to Freebeat, where I post new music-related content every single day. So if that sounds good to you, hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell. Today's patron shout-out goes to Franklin Alvarado. Thank you so very much for the support. Let's get started. Okay, I've got one goal today. Finally learn how the performance mode in the Polyend Tracker works. I've had this device in my possession for several months now, and I still have yet to take a look at performance mode. Now, right before filming this video, I watched about a two-minute tutorial uh, from Polyend's uh, YouTube channel, their own YouTube channel. Uh, so I, I just wanted to get a, a rough handle on how it actually kind of worked. Uh, so I could go in and learn it myself in this video. Uh, real quick, shout out to Zounds.com uh, for supplying me with this Polyend tracker to use for all of these videos. Good luck getting this thing back from me. <laughs> That's all I'll say there. Okay, so the track I have pulled up for us to play with today is uh, Back to Me, uh, the, the tracker version. So I actually wrote this song on the tracker, exported it to Ableton, and finished it there. But I've pulled up pattern four of this uh, particular song, and that's, uh, I believe at least, what we're primarily going to be using to demonstrate and play around with the performance mode. Uh, here's what the unaltered pattern sounds like. <laughs> There you go. Pretty simple. Uh, I believe it's just, yeah, 64 steps long. A uh, nice melody, nice bass line, some chords in the background, some fun drums, and uh, a, a little, uh, like, effect snare there at the end as well. Uh, so, yeah, it'll be, it, it should work out perfectly to perform with. So, to get to performance mode, we're going to press the perform button. Now we're in performance mode. Let's go over how it works real quick. Each of these eight buttons correspond to one of our eight different tracks, as you can see there. When you press a button, it selects a track, and you can select multiple tracks. If you hold shift and press a button, it'll then mute one of those tracks. Anyway, when a track is selected, we can affect that track using any of these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 different categories here, or different columns of effect. These effects here are fully customizable, and they actually correspond to the row of pads beneath them. So let's take uh, let's take Tune, for example, right here. It's clearly this row, and it goes all the way down. The dotted line here represents the effect essentially being off, and uh, is selected by using the top row of the uh, grid. If we go one down, then we can see the plus 12 turns green, Another one, minus 3, and minus 12. If we want, we can change these values too. So basically what this means is, right now, track 1 is selected. So in this case, track 1 is the kick drum, if I'm remembering right, uh, on this track. If I push this button right here, under tune, and plus 12, that'll actually raise the kick drum 12 semitones. Let's uh, turn it off, have a listen. <laughs> Yeah, then we can go down 12 semitones by using this bottom pad. Or minus three. Or off. Super cool. Again, that's because we have track one, the kick drum selected, and we used the tuning column. And I have these set to various different uh, degrees of tuning. And these numbers are also fully customizable. So if I hold down uh, the plus 12 right here, I can use the jog wheel to change that to really whatever I want. I'm going to leave it at plus 12. You'll also notice when I release the pad, it stays where it's set. If we go up to the dotted row there, the empty row, and hold it down, we can still change the parameter, but as soon as we release the pad, it's going to go back to the default uh, off position. Let's have a listen to that. <laughs> That's super cool. We can also affect multiple tracks at once. So let's do this. Yeah. 
yeah, as you can see, the possibilities start to become pretty intense. However, it gets even crazier, because if we look down at the uh, track labels here, we can see that not only does the button correspond to the track, but it also has a pattern listed. And right now we can see they're all on pattern four. So if I hold down a track button and use left or right, you can see I can actually change the pattern for that individual track. That is crazy. That means you can have different tracks playing different patterns that were never intended to be used together, and it allows you to really, really experiment. Now, when you change a pattern using the left or right arrows, it actually waits for the pattern to complete uh, one pass through before changing. However, if you hold the track button and use the up or down arrow, it'll instantly change the pattern for you. So I believe pattern eight uh, is just a straight four on the floor kick drum. So let's see how that sounds against everything else in pattern four. <laughs> Very different feel, isn't it? Yeah, that can get out of control really fast, but is super cool because you know, at least in my opinion, I use the tracker uh, to make music that, well, is very, very set in place. Uh, you know, every every line is a piece of data and every line has multiple columns. Uh, you know, uh, I really like to use this to write out every single little note. So it takes a lot of the spontaneity out of things for me uh, when I'm actually working on songs. But the performance mode completely changes that. Also, I can't remember if I've mentioned it or not, but you can actually change what all of these different effect categories are. So if I press record, I can then use the arrows to navigate uh, between all of the different effects and up and down actually changes them. So we've got overdrive, bit depth. Ooh, we're going bit depth there. You can actually change pattern length. Okay, uh, pattern length, that's crazy. Pattern play mode, sample position, sample end, uh, LFO speed, step repeater, pattern play mode. We already have that one. Volume panning, tuning, low pass, high pass, band pass, delay send, sample position, yeah, reverb send, your LFOs. So let's change some of these here. We'll change step repeater. I'm not really sure what these are going to do, so we'll just find out together. Should be cool, though. Okay. Sample playback. Can I make one of these reverse? Yes. Okay, cool. So we can just reverse whatever track is selected. Uh, nice. LFO speed. We won't worry about that. Sample position. Uh, that could be neat, depending on the sample. Could also be uh, kind of... Wild, <laughs> depending on what you've got set up. Uh, pattern play mode, random. Yeah, that's fine. Forward, backward, sure. Pattern length. Okay, this is one I'm very interested in. Being able to cut off patterns short, I think could be really, really cool. Yeah, there we go. Bit depth. Whoop, this one. <laughs> this is going to be, this is going to be nice, I think. Low pass cutoff. Oh, that one's better for, like, using in real time, isn't it? Uh, let's, uh, adjust panning, actually. We'll go hard left, hard right, yeah, fine, and then, there we go, for volume, cool. All right, I'm gonna turn off, uh, record mode, set all of these to the top, and, uh, let's have a little performance. <laughs>
Okay, that was chaos. I loved it. I can't believe I've waited this long to get into the performance feature. Uh, obviously, that song was really not written with that kind of setup in mind, but I still think we got to some cool places in there. Obviously, it was pretty hectic, but that's okay. The possibilities here are pretty ridiculous. Now, one side is that you cannot record your performance into uh, anything internal on the tracker. You would have to record your audio uh, separately uh, with an external device, and it wouldn't be tracked out, of course. But that's okay. I don't really feel like that's the target for a feature like this. It really is just for performing. And I gotta say... That's pretty cool. I'm definitely going to be playing with this uh, more in the future. I'm quite surprised that you can get so much spontaneity out of a piece that was designed to be very, very set uh, note-wise. So, yeah, surprising. I, I, I really enjoyed that. Just like I do hope you found this video informative or at least entertaining. If you did, be sure to leave a like on it. If not, don't worry, you can always leave a dislike. Doesn't hurt my feelings, just makes me try that much harder next time. Either way, be sure to hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell. Big announcement coming on Friday, just two days from now. Hope you're all looking forward to it. Thank you all so very much for being here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.